about it though. Okay. Trying to make up my mind what I should do. He's give me two illustrations. He give me two things to do. But I'm going to ask you to do a favor for me today. Instead of doing it here this morning, there's two scriptures in the Bible that I want you to read tonight or sometime this afternoon. And uh, that's Ecclesiastes chapter 2, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. I want you to read them both through. And then if you need any more, go back into 1 Kings to follow along with it and read that. But I sat back there and been, had been listening to all the rat race in this election. How dirty, how stinky, how sneaky it's getting to be. And I, I thought, well, what could I preach about this morning? And uh, I said, well, we'll just continue on with the rat race that we're in. We are in a rat race today Amen. in this world. Uh, it was on a graduation card sent to a person. And it says, welcome to the rat race. <coughs> and for, uh, I'm glad that, that these here, that's one of the reasons I think I wanted to go back into school after I graduated, because I didn't want to get out into the rat race where the people were at. Uh, there's, uh, we're unable today to uh, describe what's going on in the world. It's just like anything else, love, uh, patience, uh, peace, uh, heaven. We're, we're unable to give words out that understands what, that, what it's going to be like. In the same way with today. I can't find enough words to, to express myself today in the, in the busy business of the day. How people go to and fro, not concerning where they're heading, not looking for the future, they're just looking for the day, trying to get through the day sometimes. But there's other people in this world that are looking forward to the future to try to find out what lies out there for them. And they're trying to assemble themselves and gather themselves all together what they need what they think they need to make it to heaven. Some of them are what they think they need to make it up on this earth. And I'll tell you something. It costs you less to make it to heaven than what it does to make it up on this earth. You might look and think about that for just a minute. All we have to do is say, Lord, I'm part of you. I want you more than anything else in this world. And get out of that rat race of trying to provide for everything and, uh, under the sun uh, and, and uh, for uh, us to try to live in this world today. God said He would supply our needs according to His riches. And He, has got, he owns everything, so he, we know it. We must maintain our life here upon this earth, but yet we've got to call on God every day, every moment, to assist us along in our, in our daily living and to get out of this race that uh, we're in. We find out that we search for meaning of life uh, and the only place that we can find that is in Christ Jesus. Other people are trying to find out the, uh, what man needs to be due to uh, make it through this world. And sometimes we'll find out, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. We find out that there's a search out there for the meaning and the purpose in this life. And as we've listened to the candidates talking about it, they're just at one thing, uh, mainly, is they're at each other's throat. They're trying to cause all kinds of problems. But I think today that's a wrong thing to be in this life when we're 
Christian. We shouldn't be at anybody else's throat. We shouldn't be talking about anybody else. Uh, uh, backbiting. We shouldn't be gossiping about anybody else because we don't want to be in that rat race that this world is in today and what it's going to become of. And I want to talk a little bit to you this morning for a few moments about a man that was in the rat race a long time ago. A man that was in the rat race a long time ago. And probably you know who I'm talking about already. And that's Solomon. Solomon was in the rat race. One, one of the problems with Solomon had, he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. That was his biggest problem. <laughs> oh, yes it was. <laughs> that was a rat race. <laughs> And the book of the Bible is contrasted in chapter 2 there of Ecclesiastics. It phrases, phrases there in verse 3, and I want you to get under, under the sun. Under the sun. That's the key verse today. Life as it seems to be nature to man is fulfilling his desires. And this is one of the biggest problems today is the desires of people, and I'm not talking about you that are a Christian, maybe, you know, I know your desires to make it to heaven, but too many people out there today have a desires to make it rich, have a desires to be high up on the society list, have a desires that new homes, new cars, new everything, but uh, life seems to be that by the nature of man. <coughs> Solomon and his reaches and his searches today we want to talk a little bit about. Solomon reached in his education and philosophy today. He was a well-educated person. He searched out for reasons for all things under the sun. He observed nature. He tried to understand why things happened as they do, and we do today. We try to figure out, why is this happening in this election? The, it never was this bad before, but we try to find out. And, we, and I want to say here, I want to throw this in, I didn't have it wrote down, but God just put it in my mind. The reason it is today is the devil knows he hasn't much time left. And he's doing everything. We find that the fine, fine frustration in, in, the, in the Bible. We go back to, go back to uh, first uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 14 or verse 1 and chapter 14 and, and 15. Let me read it to you. I have seen all your works that are done under the sun and indeed all is vanity gasping for the wind. What is, what is crooked cannot be straightened. What is lack cannot be numbered. Look at, listen to that. There's a lot of things that's happening in this world we can't straighten out. But I'm so glad for one thing. That all it takes, took for me, and that all it would take for you would call upon God. And to say, God, forgive me of this, my sins. Forgive me because I have done things wrong that I know I shouldn't have. And Lord, we know that today, He said, I'm faithful and just to forgive you that. That's all it takes. It don't take... Millions of dollars, what the people think today. Uh, they, they have to have a bunch of money to live in this world today, you know. Well, I can tell them if they follow after me, they find out they ain't got much money. <laughs> I don't have it in my pockets, you know, today. But, and uh, I haven't went without food. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> got a smile from one. Yeah. God is so great for us, children. He wants to do things for us. What a, what a blessing God can give to us. Gasping for the wind there, there in that 14th verse it talks about. One expects, expects life to be great, but it's according to God. It's just vanity. It's just vanity. It's just vanity in this world. And like the wind... Much is described. Life cannot be held in one's hand. It's like the wind. You can't hold the wind in your hand. You can't load your life in your hand. It's in God's hands. He has control. 
He's in charge. Not you. Not in any, any way. In spite of man today, the greatest effort is uh, the crooked things. We need to try to straighten. We're so glad that God can straighten our things out for us. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? No matter which way we head, He can straighten up those things out. Make them right by asking forgiveness. That's the reason he's, Jim's talked about that in the, there. But God so loved the world. It wasn't the world that He loved. It's the people that, that Jim said, the sinners in this world. That's what He loved. He still loves the sinner. He still likes them. He still wants them in His, in his fold. <coughs> Just like the 90 and 9 uh, the sheep that He came and rescued, you know, was there in the fold. But the one was lost and he went out after hunting for that one because he wanted that one also. He wanted, it wasn't just because the 99 was saved, but there was one lost. And that's the way we should be today. We can't be in our minds today, well, I, I'm satisfied with what's here. I'm satisfied with the number of people we got. I'm satisfied with, with my life. And I don't think any of us can actually say that we're satisfied. I know I'm not. I'm not satisfied. I, I with the family that I got here, yes, I'm talking about that. But I'm not just satisfied with you. I would like to see more. And I do want you to pray. This I had a good conversation with this lady that on the telephone, and she's supposed to be here Wednesday night. She had other things that she couldn't make it today. Uh, her and her ex, ex her ex husband will be with her. It's supposed to be. And uh, they're trying to get things mended back together and get back together. And I told them they had to get it. The best thing to do to start is get in church, give your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, He'll make a way. And uh, we, I need you to pray. She was uh, said she was in another church. I'll, I'll go ahead and say this. Uh, she was in another church and she had to leave. Not because she was forced out by the people of the church, but she was forced out by the pastor. The pastor got to liking her too well, mm. making passes at her, and she had to leave. How sad it can be. That's what I'm talking about. We're in a rat race today, children. We don't know where to go. We find out in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 18, for in such a wisdom is much grief and who, he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. We can get to the place where we're too, have too much knowledge. And the Bible says that, that we can get there. We expect the, the outcome of wisdom to be successful. We, when we think that we know everything, think that we should be successful. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ personally in your life, you're not ever going to be successful. But Solomon concluded for his life and found out no guarantees. This grief that took place in his hope of human achievement alone. We find out that Solomon searched and tried his pleasure. He tried in uh, feelings. He tried myrrh and found it misery. He tried other things and had problems. <coughs> myrrh is supposed to be a joyfulness and fun and gay and laughter. In verse 25, if you want to look at that, he tried comedy and found out that it was chaos. He tried wine and found out it was one that still left him wanting. He tried diversions and found out disappointments. Solomon, try, Solomon tried to find many things to be great in his projects. We go here and talk about just a little bit. And found out that he had a great wealth and everything. But his achievements 
and things all pointed out to be a, a, not valuable to him. He was a well-known person, but yet it didn't make him that great. He said, I made my works great. I built myself a house. I planted a vineyard. I made myself a garden and an orchard. And I planted all kinds of fruit trees. He said, I even planted a, a pool, a water pool, which was to water my <coughs> fruit trees and make them grow. He said, I tried a mansion. I tried music in verse 8. And found out verse 8 says there, I also gathered myself silver and gold and the special treasures of the king. He said, I also required a male and female singers and delighted in the songs and of their meanings and musical instruments of all kinds. He tried everything in his life. He tried power and position in verses 9 and 10. I, I just got to read it. I better read it so you can understand. Maybe you're right at the moment. So I come great and excellent more than all who ever lived before me in Jerusalem. Also the wisdom remains with me. Whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from. I did not withdraw my heart from my pleasures. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my reward for all my labor. Think of that. He enjoyed it. His heart enjoyed it. But he says, that was all my reward. That's all I got. Maybe I give you a little understanding. Uh, here we do a lot of times we do, and I'm not saying it's wrong. But if a person gets up here and sings a song, does a special number or something, and expects the crowd or crowd to clap their hands, if that's what they're expecting, that's their reward. <clears throat> and I'm not saying it's wrong to clap it. If you enjoy it, do it. But if that's why they came up here to sing. Uh, just like Solomon. He's done all this here and for his reward. Tried to find his reward. But it found out it was nothing. It was all Amen. vanity, according to if you Amen. read it. Look. Then I looked in all my works and found out the hand I had done and the labor in which I had toiled. And indeed, all was what? All was vanity. All was nothing in the sight of God. Gasping for the wind, just out there. Here was no prophet under the sun. No prophet under the sun. No satisfi satisfying substance to show for. Wisdom has no guarantee in life today and what we have for us. Our achievement is satisfying and our accomplishments are comparable to Solomon's. What should it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What has he got? How to know if you are in a rat race today? Maybe I ask that question. If you are exalting yourself and gaining material things, if you're working too hard for material things, then you're in a rat race. If you're working day and night to keep up with the others, I had one couple one day come to me and said, man, it's hard to keep up with you. It's hard. I said, I hope you're not trying to keep up with me. Yeah, it's hard to keep up with. You think, it's hard to keep up with the West. And I thought to myself, what is it worth? What is a gain in people, you know, in life? 
if you're just working for yourself, for the high feeling of the moment, if you're out here and drugs and alcohol and stuff, just for that little pleasure for just a moment, it's not worth it. If you're building your life without the Lord Jesus Christ in Psalms 127 and 1, unless the Lord builds the house, the labor is in vain. Who builds it? Unless the Lord guards the city. The watchman stays awake is in vain. God is so sorry today in every day's life. In our lives today, we know as Christian people know this, that God is so good. He's so sovereign in family life. Oh, I'll tell you children, when we put our, our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, as it did there in verses 3 and 4, talked about, Behold, the children are an heritage from the Lord. They're not a burden, they're heritage. Amen. They're a privilege, they're a blessing. When we have our children... It's like the arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children one's youth. Warriors succeed in the battle. So the children are invaluable as defined the father and the mother. What a blessing it is today to know that God is so great to us. How to get out of the rat race. As we see as a rat race today. One, first by giving your heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ, giving him your sins. Second is look to Him for your salvation. Third is lay aside every weight and every sin. Fourth, you must run with patience. Not only with patience, but with steadfastness. Don't let anything shake you up, bother you, no matter what it may be. If even the illness comes over your body, you are not supposed to let it shake us up. We're supposed to turn it over into the Lord's hands and let Him take care of it. For His will to be done. Of course, he don't want, I don't believe He wants us to be ill. I don't believe He wants to be sick. But there is a reason. We maybe need to find out what the reason is that we have the problem. Sometimes the Bible says, and I can't remember what Scripture it is, it just come into my mind, that everything that we go through, all the pain and agony and things that we go through, sometimes it's not for us. It's for somebody watching us. For somebody in life looking after yeah, us. True. Trying to follow our foot. And then fifth is keep our eyes on Jesus. We gotta keep her. No, we gotta. We see all this going on in the world today, all the turmoil and the thing, the fighting and and uh, shooting and all kinds of things. We read the Bible, and the Bible tells us it's going to happen. And then we read on into the back of the Bible, and it says it's not going to get any better until He comes. Until he calls his children home. And then it's going to turmoil. It's going to, the raft of God is going to be poured out on that, that seven year time that is beyond anything that we can imagine if you're left behind. And I don't want anybody to be left behind. We find out what God Solomon did here in his life and what he did and what it cost. After all, Solomon had done all the investments that he had made along with all of his things that he had. The Bible says he was just buried. And Jim, Jim talked about the other night, what legs are you going to leave behind? What's people going to see? Maybe it's not what I... Little humorous story. The woman's husband had passed away and she put on his tombstone, rest in peace. Honey, rest in peace. And about a month later, 
his secretary brought her in a box of stuff at, from his office. And his wife started reading to it and found love letters and everything. She went back to the person that made the tombstone and told him, I want you to go out and add something to it. She said, I want you to want to say rest in peace until I get there. <laughs> That's not what kind of legacy we want to leave behind. That's not a quite thing that we want to let people to know about us. What's people want to? Well, I, 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 I doubt, but uh, you know. How is it today in your life? Are you still in that rat race? Are you still? He was just. He, it said that he was just buried. They used to put a lot of that on tombstones, the things that what people was known for. And wouldn't it be terrible to just you, you live a whole life and and uh, do do things and you build up a big legacy and then find out they put on your tombstone he just died just up and died nothing for anybody to remember him by if you are living in that kind of rat race today you can put it to end. If you give yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not be sorry in the end. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10 and verse 39, He that findeth, it, findeth his life shall not lose it, but he that loses his life shall find it for my name's sake. And I was thinking last night. <laughs> Remember the nursery rhyme? Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> Police was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. It even followed her to school one day, which was against the rules. Isn't it today? But all but here. But the children laughed and played because the Lamb was there. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful? We have lowered the Lamb of Christ there with us. We can laugh and joy and have happiness. We don't have to worry about what's going on around about us. When we find all in Jesus that He has for us. What a thought today. When you get tired and old and the rest of the rats have gone away where are you going to find you? where are you going to be? where are you going to be at? as I said if you wanted to read a little bit more in that Kings, 1 Kings chapter 11 and Verse 43, it ends up what, what happened. After Solomon done all of everything, all took all, all of it. He was the most wealthy person in the world. He had everything. But what happened to him after he had prospered? Rest with his father and was buried in the city of David his father. Just buried. Just buried. Is that what you're looking for today? Is that what you're looking for? Let's get out of that rat race today, children. And put our life in the Lord Jesus Christ's hands. And let Him take control. And I do believe without any doubt in my mind if you would do this, that need to do that, you would find much peace and happiness. And possibly less painful in the life that we're living. What a thing. And I saw wisdom, exile folly, 
the light also excelled the darkness. The wise man's eyes are in our, excuse me, the wise, the wise man's eyes are in his head, and the fool that walketh in darkness. Yet myself perceive that the same event happened to them all. So I said in my heart, as it happen, happens to the fool, and also happens to me. And why was I then more wise than I said to my heart? This also is vanity. Let us stand. I hope this morning that you're not building a fortune for yourself, a name for yourself as far as wealth and finances and stuff and high in society. You're not going to gain anything by it. Because sooner or later, those people that you thought was your friends are going to be letting you down. But when you come to Jesus and find a family as we have here, a family that cares for one another, a family that will pray at the drop of, a, of anything that happens, all we got to know is no, as Brother David was talking about this morning. We can't read minds and things, but when it's brought to our attention, this is like I do every night, everybody. I have some 72 people that I pray for every night. In fact, it's a little bit more than that because I asked, I added three on the other night because and I added two last, or last night, yeah, two last night. And so. I tell people, I said, the time I get through praying for people, sometimes I'm wide awake. <laughs> I go to bed sleeping and start praying and do things. But I feel, I feel so guilty when I don't. Even if I fall asleep and I'll, I'll realize the next morning, well, I didn't pray. I didn't get that far in my prayers. And sometimes I do fall asleep doing that. And I have to say, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. How about you today? Anybody need prayer? Anybody? Need that touch from the Lord Jesus Christ? Maybe you're just down. Maybe you're in that rat race. And you want to get out of it. Maybe you're heading for that way. And you want us to stop? Anybody? Anybody? I do want you. I do really want you to read those scriptures that I give you. Please. You'll find out so much more. I, I was really had started to do was just to have my wife read the whole, them, all them scriptures. And that was going to be my message this morning. Just that last verse, after Solomon gained everything, he was just buried. <coughs> Don't say whether he was right with the Lord or anything. He just didn't mention it. How sad it can be. Go through the whole life and come down to the end of the road and have nothing to show for. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to Thee this morning. We're so grateful for this opportunity we have to be in the house of the Lord. Lord, we ask You. We're asking, Lord, for that determination, that desire, that it would heave upon us more than ever we have before. Because this rat race that this world is in today, we don't want a part of it. We, we'd just rather for you to come right back right now and get us out of it. But I know, Lord, 
Sometimes we've got to go through things. And you said it wasn't going to get any better. And so, Lord, we know. You, you're on time, right time, all the time, Lord. There's no dead. There is time for everything. And right now, Lord, there's people out there that needs to be saved. People that needs to give their sins forgiven. There's people that needs to be healed. And Lord, it takes that patience. It takes that faith to believe in You that all things, that there's nothing that is impossible for You. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.